When I get older, I will be stronger. They'll call me freedom, just like a waving flag. Hello, everyone. Science is about describing nature. More precisely, what we do in science is come up with models that provide good description of natural phenomena and also provide predictions that we can test in experiments. And most often than not, these models would be mathematical models, and they involve some sort of mathematical equations. And it will very, very often happen that these uh, involve differential equations. So this is the subject that I want to study, that we want to study this week. So in this first video, what I'll do is just introduce the idea of differential equations, and then we'll study a very simple case, which is perhaps the most important differential equation of all. All right, so let's first start by backtracking a little bit. So what do we know about equations? So we studied a number of different types of equations. For example, we studied algebraic equations. What are those? So these are equations that involve polynomials. That would be an example here. And if you're asked to find a solution of an algebraic equation, what you want to find is some numbers, say x equals 2 or 3, that satisfy this equation. All right, we also study something that is sometimes called transcendental equations. So these are equations just like algebraic equations, but they also involve trig or log functions. Uh, that would be an example. But again, if you're trying to find a solution, what you want to find is just some numbers that satisfy this equation. Now, differential equations are slightly different. So what is a differential equation? So a differential equation is an equation, equation that involves a function and its derivative. For example, this would be an example. This is an equation for y as a function of x. On the right-hand side, you have the function y and also some dependence on the variable x. And on the left-hand side, you have the derivative of the function y. Now, there could be also higher-order derivatives here, so second-order derivative of y and so on. Now, what is different with differential equations is if you're trying to solve a differential equations, you're not trying to find some numbers that satisfy this equation. What you're trying to find is some functions, y of x, that do satisfy the requirement given by this equation. Right, so the solutions are different in nature. You're trying to find function solutions, not number solutions. All right, there's something called the order of a differential equation, which is the order of the highest derivative that is, appears in the equation. So in this case, this would be a first order differential equation because only the first derivative appears here. Now, if you've done physics, you've probably seen already a lot of examples of differential equations. Newton's law can be re rewritten as a differential equation. Uh, the wave equation, if you study waves in physics. Also, Schrodinger equation, if you do quantum mechanics. Basically, they're all over the place, and not just in physics, in biology, and so on. Okay, so now I should have, uh, you should be motivated that you uh, want to learn how to solve differential equations because they're really important in science. Now, there's different ways to approach finding solutions of differential equations. The first uh, thing that you may try is what we call analytical method, which is the idea of actually finding an explicit formula for the function that is a solution of a given differential equation. If you can do that, that's great. That's the best way to go. Now, it happens, unfortunately, that, that, that a lot of models that describe natures are quite complicated differential equations, and you cannot find uh, explicit formula for the solutions. So analytical methods may fail. Now, another thing you can do is what's called qualitative analysis. So this is the idea of trying to understand the behavior of solutions of the differential equation without explicitly finding a formula for them. This is a lot more powerful in the sense that you can apply that to a much, much bigger class of differential equations. So in terms of modeling and science, that is a very, very important tool. Now, the third approach would be numerical methods, which is also very, very important. Uh, so this is, uh, if you want to find a solution but you can't use an analytical method, then you may want to ask a computer to find, uh, find it for you numerically. But you need to tell the computer what to do. All right, so let's get started by looking at our first example of a differential equation, which is perhaps the most important one in the world. So let me introduce it from the point of view of population dynamics. Suppose that you have a, a I don't know, you're, you're looking at the population of fish in a pond or something like that, and you want to model uh, the rate of growth of the population. Now, uh, let me call, for example, P as being the population and T the time variable. So you want to calculate how P is varying in as a function of time. Now, perhaps the first model you could come up with is the idea that the rate of change of the population will be proportional to the number of uh, fish or the number of uh, elements in your set. So in other words, the rate of change of the population will be proportional to the population itself. Right. So in terms of mathematical equation, what that would mean is that 
the rate of change of the population, dp dt, would be proportional to p, which means that it's equal to a constant times p, with k here being arbitrary constant. Now, of course, this constant would depend on the model that you're interested in. All right, so that would be an example of a differential equation. The solution here will be a function, p of t, that satisfies the equation above. All right, so let me first look at a simple case. So let's look at the case k equals to 1, just to start with. So that would be the equation dp dt is equal to, t, to p. So we're trying to find a solution. So what function is such that a derivative of that function is equal to the function itself? If you think about it a little bit, there's one function that we've seen, which we love, which has this property. It is called the exponential function, right? The function p t is equal to e to the t is exactly such that its derivative, its first derivative, it's equal to the function itself, right? If I, you take the derivative, okay, you get e to the t again, which is p. So this is a solution of this equation. Now, is that the only solution? Well, again, if you think about it, you'll realize that actually it's not. For example, I could take 5 times e to the t. If you take the derivative of 5 times e to the t, you get 5 times e to the t again, so it does satisfy this differential equation. And in fact, I could take, say, pi times e to the t. It would still satisfy this differential equation. So now you see where I'm going. If you think about it, you can convince yourself that you can put here an arbitrary constant. Right, so C here is an arbitrary constant. And for any choice of C, I will still get a solution of that differential equation. Right. Okay, so this is called the general solution of the differential equation. General here means that you're actually looking for the most general solution of the differential equation. And for a first-order differential equation, it will depend on the constant. So it's really a family of solutions that depends on the constant here, which you introduce, which is kind of like a constant of integration, as we will see. Okay, so this is the general solution of this differential equation. Now we can go back to the general case. Now if you choose an arbitrary constant k, so my equation is dp dt is equal to a constant, times p, then you can convince yourself easily that the solution will have a very similar form, but it's going to be a constant times e to the k t. Right? Whenever I take a derivative, I'll bring a k out. So the first derivative here will be, will be c k e to the k t, which is equal to k times p. Right? So this is the general solution. All right, so now you see why these are very important in terms of modeling. So what these solutions are, these are exponential solutions. So they basically model exponential growth or exponential decay. So what do they look like? So if I draw a little graph here, of course they depend on k and c, but uh, let's first look at the case where k is positive. Now for different choices of c, these will be the solutions, things like that. And also for negative choices of C, I get something like this. So for K greater than zero, this would be exponential growth. At least if C is positive, if C is negative, then it's kind of exponential growth but on the negative side. And if you can also uh, draw what would happen if K is negative, then you'll get basically things like this and so on. So for k negative, this would be exponential decay. So what we've just proved here is that if you take the model that your population, the rate of change of the population is proportional to the population itself, then solving the differential equations tells you that the population will, uh, will experience uh, exponential growth or exponential decay depending on, on the sign of the constant here. All right, so this is pretty cool. Uh, this was uh, our first example of finding a general solution of a differential equation. Now let me uh, do something uh, slightly more uh, complicated. So suppose I have the exact same differential equation, so dp dt is equal to 
constant times p. But now I'm going to impose some initial condition. So what does that mean? So what that means is, for example, if I'm talking about the population dynamics, suppose that I know what the population is at the original time. So I know that the population at t equals to 0, or t equals t0, which doesn't have to be 0, in fact. You could take it to be 0, but this is just a value of time. I know that this is a constant, which I call p0. So I know that. So how can I use that to find a particular solution of my differential equation? In other words, now what I want to do is find a function that satisfies the differential equation, but which is also such that it satisfies the initial condition. This we call initial condition. Well, how can we do that? So we've already found what the general solution of the differential equation is. Right? In this case, it was p of t is equal to constant e to the kt. But the constant is arbitrary here, so what we can do now is use the initial condition to try to fix the constant. So what we'll do is take p at t equals t0. So this is c times e to the k t0. And we want to set that equal to the original value of our population, p0. So from there, we can solve for c. We get that c is equal to p0 e to the minus k t0. And then we can substitute back into our general solution to get the particular solution that does satisfy both the differential equation and uh, the initial condition. So if we substitute c here for this, we'll get p0. Then I combine these two terms together to get this solution here. Now, this would be a particular solution. Now, p0 here and t0 are not arbitrary anymore. They're given by my initial condition. So this is a particular solution of the differential equation. And whenever you're given a differential equation and an initial condition, we call that an initial value problem. OK, so let me just summarize the last uh, few terms that I introduced here on the slide. So if you're given a differential equation, the general solution of a differential equation is the family of functions that satisfy the differential equation. And for first order equation, they will depend, the general solution will depend on a constant c, which is arbitrary. So it's a family of solutions. Now, an initial value problem is a differential equation with an initial condition. So for a first order differential equation, we only need one initial condition to fix the constant c. And then the particular solution of an initial value problem is the function that satisfies both the differential equation and the initial condition. So the idea is to first solve the general solution and then uh, fix the constant c by imposing the initial condition.